Hello, good morning, and welcome to you out there. I am Sim UK, and this is High Fleet. So, today we're talking about missiles, and radar, and sonar, and all sorts of good stuff. So, I've created a new profile, or a new campaign, two yards with the missiles. We've got three Fenex, which let's go for an extra yards. We'll come down here. We'll grab my little big, my little brother, and we'll grab a longbow. We should have enough for that. Yeah. Okay. And then what I want is a tanker and Sim Rook V3, if I can afford that. And we might not be able to. That's too expensive now. Sim Rook V2. Okay. We've got just enough for that. We'll put it on hard. Why not? Let's test it out. Um, so before we get started into this little let's play campaign scenario, I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to show you in this uh, tutorial. So I will teach you, um, or I'll show you rather, how all of the different missiles behave. I'm not going to use any nuclear missiles today, but effectively they are exactly the same as the non-nuclear warhead missiles. They just have nuclear warheads on them uh, and they cause absolute destruction and destroy thousands and thousands of lives in a single hit. Go watch my Let's Start a Nuclear War video if you want to see how bad things get when nuclear weapons are being utilised. But um, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the radar, how to use the e-lent, how to use the sonar, how to use them together, how to stay hidden from the enemy, how to avoid the enemy, how to attack the enemy, how to use aircraft to attack the enemy. Um, there's, gonna, there's a few things I wanted to get into this, but it's very difficult with the game to show you everything, and a couple of the missiles didn't fire properly. But I'm just going to teach you a little bit about each of the missile types. So you can see here on the screen, we've got um, all the missiles that are currently available in game. We've got R5 Zenith, R9 Sprints, and Fab 1000. Now, these aren't actually missiles, these are bombs, but um, they're grouped together with the missiles. So these are non applicable in today's video. These are anti aircraft missiles, these are uh, close quarters battle, that's why they're very short range. The speed is not applicable. They literally Literally are when you're in a fight you utilize these three so they are not what we're really focusing on today um, any missile type that we have the a100 the r3 and the kh15s all have a nuclear variation uh, or variant which has an n in the name and the only difference is that it has a nuclear warhead the r3 has one the kh15 has one the kh15p also has one i'll explain these in a moment so um Quite quite simply, uh, the A100, which didn't fire properly today, is a long-range um, missile, and it has a type of um, built, not built-in radar, but requires um, radar from your ship to track the enemy. So if your radar is currently tracking the enemy and you fire an A100, it kind of knows where it's going, and it will go straight towards that, as long as you're aiming it towards that, and it will try and hit the target. If your radar is turned off and it doesn't know where the target is, uh, there's a good chance it might miss if you're not accurate with your aiming. Simple as that. 900 miles per hour, very long. Now the R3s are a medium-range missile. They are incredibly fast much much faster than any of the other missiles if you're firing after a target these are the ones to use this will track them down and catch them very very quickly uh, but of course and when they're traveling at that speed they're using a lot of fuel which means that they are medium range they will run out of fuel and just fall out in the sky and be wasted um quite quickly so they're only good for medium range missiles but they are super fast if for example the enemy are firing a bunch of kh-15s at you and you fire a bunch of r3s at them your missiles will hit and kill them before their missiles even get halfway towards you so you could fire your missiles if you see them fire at you you could fire off a couple of r3s and then try and turn off your radar and move that is a good tactic it could very well work now the kh-15s for me are the most interesting of the missiles they've got long range they're only 900 uh, miles per hour but that's fast enough to catch most ships um, but you have variations you have the non-built-in radar which requires radar from the ship you have the built-in radar which means that this missile has a radar on it so you could fire this from distance slightly inaccurately and it will hunt for a radar transmission now the thing to note about all of these missiles is that they're pretty dumb they can't actually distinguish between you and an enemy so if you fire and where you put the um the head of the arrow is where the radar will turn on with the kh-15ps if you fire that after the enemy or you fire it inaccurately it will 
past the enemy and it will try and find the next available target. Now if your ships are the next available target, if like in this example today, you have your ships above and below the enemy and the missile passes the enemy, then it's very likely that you're going to hit your own ships with a missile. So you do have to be quite careful with them. Uh, they're all pretty much the same price, about 1500 each, I believe. Uh, there could be some variation on that. I should have put the price in here. That would have been rather helpful. But, um, yeah, just go and have a look. You'll see that uh, the nuclear missiles, etc., are uh, a little bit more, I think, probably about 2000 But, um, honestly, I highly recommend you avoid using nuclear missiles because it turns the game into a bloodbath. A real bloodbath. Um, but there is nothing wrong with enticing enemy ships, and I'll show you how to do it. Everything will be explained to you in detail in the video. Right, let's jump back into the campaign. All right, so we've got a fuel depot. We've got an enemy signal center, which is nice and close. So let's just send... Uh... Send the rook. That should be able to do the thing on its own. We'll send a little brother into the middle here. Okay, we'll continue on. And yes, 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 yes. Two other fuel tanks. So, uh, we've got full fuel. We'll come and we'll grab our explosives, high explosives. And we'll grab... We'll actually grab some aircraft rockets. 20 rockets. We'll grab... 20 bombs, we'll grab 20 of those bombs, right, good stuff, right, so we're going to sit at uh for way, 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 way too long, right, so we've been sat at uh too long, uh is now becoming dangerous, that's good, that's exactly what we're after, um, I'm going to swing up here real quick, have a little chat with these boys. Alrighty. Right. So 3.2 hours. And that will be repaired. So I'm going to turn my main radar off on this big ass ship here. We've still got our sonar. And it's getting dangerous down in Ur. So. These guys have no radar whatsoever. They don't even have ECM. They've got absolutely nothing. They're literally a fight force and nothing else. As soon as that message goes out... As soon as that interrupted... There you go. So we've gone dangerous down in Earth. And they've intercepted a transmission regarding our arrival at Earth. One of the locals has sent it. So, they've basically said to the enemy... Oh, oh nuggets. This is why I want the screens to be totally different. As I keep doing this. Are we at Ur? Yes, we are. Good. Right, what I meant to do was move this guy down here. Okay, so we're going to hit the button. Strike group. So we know where the strike group are coming from and we know where they're heading. So they are coming straight down through Dorrit, through Nimreth, and straight down to Ur. So that's where the strike group is. Now, I'm going to have a, a little click here on tactical. Let's see where the next tactical flight group are. Oh, looks like they're going to be way up north way up there. They're not, they're not going to be coming down anytime soon. I'm not going to worry about them. So, these guys are definitely coming down here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, switch over to these guys whose radar is off. So, theoretically, they don't know that we're here. At least, that is the plan, of course. Uh, so, we're going to grab all of our That's interesting. The missiles are on both things. Okay. So, if you uh, if you click on one, two, three, four, five, six, you see I've, I've now got a group of aircraft. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position them down here. And they're just going to hang around down there for quite a while. I mean, we haven't got much fuel left, so they can't go much further than that anyway. Um, but they are at least uh, going to be in position. So if these guys start firing missiles, hopefully we'll be able to intercept them. Now, if they start firing missiles from here, which they might do, it's going to be very, very close to see whether or not um, the aircraft will be able to intercept them. We'll have to see how that goes. Right, so let's just speed things along. So we've got the aircraft here flying around, basically being a protective force for these guys. And uh, we've got these guys coming in. Um, Let's turn our sonar. So we know to expect the enemy coming from a sort of north northwesterly kind of direction. So if I get my sonar sat and ready for that. And um, why are they not refueling? Did I not select refuel, perhaps? Yeah, it's supposed to be a hundred percent refueled. Why are they not refueling? Okay, annoyingly the aircraft have come back before uh, any missiles have been intercepted. We'll click on here. I'm still not getting any sight nor sound of them. Okay, I'm expecting some kind of radar. Let's, uh, let's set this up to be sector search. So we're just going to look north northwest because that's where they're going to be coming from. We'll get a bit of north in there just in case they come straight down this route, which is what they said they were going to do. Morning. Radar emission detected. Okay, here we go. So the E lint. The E-Lint on this radar, this aircraft here, has gone off. Now, we're expecting them to come down this route. So you can see here that on a radial of 330, which is pretty much there, which is where we expect them to be coming from, they are now um, pretty close. Now, this outer thing here has a relevance in terms of distance. Uh, I forget off the top of my head what each one means, but uh, I'll try and remember to edit that in the edit and say what how many of these are. So we, I think that's like 500 kilometres, 300, 200, 100 right on you, something like that, something along those lines. Um, okay, so it's pretty good. That means they're, they're heading our way, which is exactly what we want. And my stupid hotkeys thing that I turned off and Microsoft have turned back on. Um, okay, so every time we speed up time, there is that. I would definitely like a different key to speed up time. Oh, see, on again. So you can see they're moving ever closer um, with their with their ship. And what we're looking for, really, is when this goes from 330 to 300, because that indicates, to me at least, that they've reached this corner and they're turning and coming down on this final stretch. So they're really close now. They're, they must be about to go from 330 to 300 degrees. There we go. 
Right, so I'm going to pause it there. So I can tell you now, <clears throat> even though I can't see them, that the enemy are about here. Now, interestingly, they haven't fired any missiles yet. Um, that is quite surprising. If we come down here, you can see that we've got four KH-15s. So these are non-radar di directed missiles. There is no guarantee that they're going to hit a target. If I fire these and I'm inaccurate, they're not going to do a huge amount of damage. But if I fire just one, say about halfway up, something like that, because the enemy do not know that we're here. The enemy think we're just here. Let's fire one out and see what happens. I'm not going to keep hitting that um, accelerate time button because, quite simply, um, my sticky buttons are annoying the hell out of me and it will stick and keep shift on even though I don't want it to be stuck on. So we've got a missile heading out in the correct direction and uh, so far nothing has happened. Oh, see it just changed direction there at the very last second. It suddenly flicked over realized that there was an enemy force in the area and so yes round about here is pretty much where the enemy are okay so that's good we're going to flick back here we're going to grab our aircraft hopefully they're up and running now three of the missiles three with bombs and we're going to put them in between our ships and the enemy ships. And we know that's the case because we know where they are. I've got two left over, two spare, which I'm going to hold on to for the time being. I'm going to unpause and just see how this pans out. So in the game, it kind of encourages you and suggests that you um, stay clear of strike groups, but um, it's always a, a good argument to say, well, let's get stuck in and uh, not wait for them to come to us, but encourage them to come to us and then take control of the situation. You can see the E-Lint is still going off. The enemy is still round about here. I'm now looking for them to come down onto a 270 radial, which will be right next to us. I am surprised they haven't fired any missiles. That is uh, quite surprising. So, what I'm going to do now with my KH-15s down here is I'm going to fire a single missile through my aircraft towards the enemy and see what happens. You ready? Now bear in mind, these do not have radar tracking systems on them. Ah, we've picked up. Oh no, we've picked up the missile and the aircraft possibly. Right, so it's gonna, is it gonna pass through our aircraft or is it going to attack our aircraft? You can see that the E-Lint has just picked up the enemy. So we know that the enemy are close now. So you see that that KH-15 has not attacked our own aircraft, okay? Oh, that one got through. Nice. So that KH-15 has damaged one of their ships now. And I'm bringing the aircraft back here because it, it is taking a while for them to get to us and I think we're going to run out of fuel before that engages with anything. So I'm quite shocked that they haven't yet hit us with any... Uh, 
go back to the intel center see if we can get an exact location on them but now they've switched to 270 so they are now currently uh, here They are literally here, so the enemy should be at exactly this spot here. Actually, let's just call it Strike Group. Okay, so we've got enough to search for the Strike Group, so I'm going to hit Strike Group, and you can see smack bang on my accurate location is where I identified them to be, and I identified them as being there based on the information that I was getting from the electronic intelligence, the ELINT system up here. They're danger close, they're at 270 radial, which means directly west, which means I put them here. We had already tracked them and we knew that they were coming in this general direction anyway. So you can see how that all tallies. Hopefully that's, I mean, that should be enough for anyone to follow, I hope. So you should have a really good, solid understanding of how the ELINT system, etc. works. And the fact that my radar is turned off and I'm hidden down on the ground, um, this... Now, I have a problem with this because this is almost useless. They have to be... I mean, look how close they are to us. They're not far away at all, and we're still not picking up on them. So we still can't use this until they get super, super close. The only thing this is really useful for, I think, is when missiles are being fired at you and you're running away, um, which you would do with your radar off. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that is very interesting that uh, that's the case. All right, so we have successfully identified where the enemy are. We have confirmed where they are. We could bring this ship back because it has no radar system on it to be detected and they don't detect the ships themselves they appear to detect uh the um oh hang on hang on hang on hang on scratch that need to get some fuel if we're going to go back to our main ship about face and now that's become dangerous as well Okay, so that should give us enough fuel just to tick over and get back to our ship. Right, now, what I want to do, this is the theory, okay? So, we've still got a whole bunch of KH-15s, so I'm going to fire two KH-15s at the enemy. We know pretty much where they are, so um, we're just going to fire that out. We're also getting an ELINT alert here. We can see they're directly north of us-ish. This isn't the most precise thing in the world, but they, they're slightly off north of us, to be honest. Uh, but we can see where they are. We've got the radar uh, bearing set directly above us, so we can see where they're coming from. We're going to unpause. I'm going to hit the magic button. So these guys are now hostile. I don't think I've ever stayed anywhere, actually and made the city hostile. So I wonder if they're going to start attacking us on the ground as well as uh, telling the enemy where we are. Could be quite interesting. So you can see on here on the radial, uh, our missiles were showing for a, a brief moment in time. It's not the easiest thing to read this IR search, but uh, it does work, I guess. Right, so you can see he's picked up his, picked up his radar. So, okay, the, now, unfortunately, the enemy are now aware that we're at Yori as well. So, it's not something I intended to do. So I'm curious what's going to happen the there. Right, so we've knocked one enemy out. We've got a second missile coming in. Obviously, this isn't a missile strike group. Okay, so they took out one of our missiles. So there's two guys left. So we can come back down here to Ur. We've got two missiles remaining. Let's fire away. 
Now I'm hoping this doesn't take out both of them, actually. Let's just fire one missile. So I want to leave one behind, believe it or not. So, <clears throat> so at some point, they should be swapping from uh, 270 radial to, uh, what's this, 220, I think, 240, something like that. Um, and that will indicate that they're still heading towards Ur, but they've now got information that we're also uh, uh, got a ship down here at Yori, so they may start coming across. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking on the old Elint up here to see what direction they're in. We've already got the radial, uh, the the sonar system set up to check. Uh, in a westerly direction, so if they start coming this way, we should start picking up on them here. You can see we've got some little blips here. These little blips indicate enemy presence or presence of a ship. Nothing too exciting. They actually destroyed that missile before it hit, which is kind of what I was expecting. Uh, but they can't keep doing it. <laughs> They're not allowed for the purposes of this mission. So we're tracking them on an elint here. We're tracking them on an elint here. So if we're looking at this elint and we see them suddenly move over to radial 30, we know they're coming across here towards Yuri. So we all know that they've changed direction, even though we're not picking them up on the radar at the moment. Did that fire? What happened there? Where did that missile go? Oh dear. Where did that missile go? I'm not sure I put a target on it, did I? Oh dear. So, they've got to a point now where uh, they're being picked up on our radar. So they've continued heading down towards Ur. Which is great. Um, I forgot to send my aircraft in early, but I was hoping they were going to fire some missiles at us, to be honest. Um, so let's send our aircraft out to meet the enemy and hope they get there before the enemy reach Ur. They should do, because the aircraft are quite a bit faster than. Uh, The most ships traveling at what 1260 miles per hour pretty fast things right now let's see if the aircraft can take these guys out you see they're coming down they're they're using their guns because i didn't give them any bombs uh what they're not doing is using their air-to-air -air missiles which i find to be a little frustrating to be perfectly honest with you um but you'll notice that they're not being shot at by the uh, by the enemy here which is a little odd but now they are now they've started firing and the chances are we're going to lose a couple of these ships so all we're doing really is antagonizing them we're not really doing enough damage against these heavily armored ships with just um machine gun fire on here if we wanted to damage them we should have sent them with bombs now if you get into a fight using an aircraft carrier and you're physically in the fight, um, then what will happen is that those missiles will be used against the enemy and they will be very effective. So I don't know if it's a bug. I, sh I assume that it's a bug because that isn't working, um, but uh, we'll see. Right, so we've got KH-15s on here, non-radar systems. We've got R3s, we've got A100s, and we've got a KH-15P. So, I'm going to fire two KH-15Ps directly at our, at our ships here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the arrow just short of where I know the strike group are. And I'm going to say, I want you, that P, by the way, indicates radar capability. So they have their own radar capability. So I'm going to say, when you get to about here, instead of carrying on all the way here i want you to turn your radar on and attack anything that you see in that area so 
but I'll unpause that. I'm gonna f I'm gonna follow up with those missiles with a couple of R3s. Now R3s are super duper fast. We're gonna turn that on and we're gonna fire that again just behind the strike group towards our uh, towards our chaps. Ah, now, I get an air raid siren coming in. Now, do you see how much faster the R3 is? It's travelling at 8,280 miles an hour, whereas these are only doing 900 miles an hour. So these guys are going to catch up with this, but nowhere near as quickly as this. In fact, this is going to catch them up. So, with the radar capability coming in, they might not get there in time. I may have mistimed this. We'll see. I've got one more. I've got an A100. Uh, we're going to fire there, uh, just behind the strike group. And that didn't seem to fire. So you see that first missile failed. Second missiles picked them up. And it's now on a heat-seeking mission to take out these guys. One down. Well, actually, it didn't say uh, destroy, which is frustrating. So that's interesting. Some of our missiles didn't seem to fire there. There might be a few bugs in the game still. So we're going to get a second missile on this anyway. Still not destroyed. But it must be weak now. It must be weak now. This missile here travelling at a very slow 900. Uh, so the R3s are super, super fast. I don't think it w it's going to reach them in time. It did. Just in time, look. So we've basically wiped out almost the entire strike group. We have just one uh, ship left, basically. And uh, none of our aircraft are available, which is a little frustrating. But, uh, okay. So down here we've got three Fenix, a Skylark, and three Yars, but we're out of missiles. So we can't fire any more missiles at these guys. So we're probably going to have to ditch and run, I'd have said. We've only got one intel there at the moment, so we're just going to pause and wait. Stupid sticky keys. So... On this particular system, we're going to turn all of our details back to 210. And we're looking for the enemy to pop up on the radar there. This radar is going to be looking slightly more to the right. You can see the E-Lint alert is still coming up, but it's all the way down there now, and he's much further away. So now he's at 210, which is down here, from our ship. So our ship is here. The E-Lint alert is saying he's very far away at 210, which is accurate. Uh, this E-Lint is saying he's quite far away at 240, which is actually here. So I suspect that the ship is somewhere here at the moment so we'll just twist our bearing ever so slightly just to incorporate that as a possibility our radar is still on on this one because we want them to know where we are the radar is still off on this one because we don't want them to know where we are let's unpause things speed up time a little bit until we get some intel points or they pop up on the radar so now we've got the intel points, I'm going to hit SG, and that's actually telling me about another strike group that's coming in, the Atlanta, uh, Atlant, 
So I'm wondering if we've theoretically destroyed uh, the first strike group. We took them down to one ship. Maybe they've decided that they don't have enough ships to fight with. Um, so let's... Um, let's wait a little bit until this ship gets closer. Whilst you're here, it's a good idea. You grab some fuel. Oh, forgot I'd spent all my money. <laughs> ah, this is the problem with trying to. Uh, this is what's hard about this game is when when you're trying to create tutorials and create scenarios, you sometimes forget about the the core mechanics of the game. Um, uh, no, I don't want to go out of there. Can I? Can I just? sell one of my ships because oh, I don't need them all uh, these yards don't actually have any actually I don't need three I don't need three Fenix I can get away with just one 13,000 for that uh, I'm going to fill up the Skylark and I'm going to send that to our now there's another thing I want to test actually oops let's get down here and do this properly there's another thing I want to test actually is um Using the Skylark. Okay, so on here we picked up a thermal signature. And you can see it's coming up. So they are already here, these guys. So let's get our ships and we're going to give them bombs this time 250 kilogram bombs. We've got six aircraft. We're going to put them between where we know the strike group are, which I'm predicting is about... Oh, actually, this is telling me they're below us. At 210. The Elint might not be... Uh... Interestingly, the Elint is not picking up on the enemy above us, but the radar is, the uh, sonar is picking up enemy above us here. You can see them... Uh, it's not very easy to tell, but you can see them on the uh, sonar. This, these little dots indicates uh, enemies. So these are missiles. If you look at the speed they're moving, and that's annoying because I've just sent these up with bombs thinking it was a strike group. So these are actually missiles coming in. Um, now I'm not sure if the aircraft are going to attack these missiles or not. We shall find out. I think they're actually moving too fast. So these ones are going to get by. This one might get caught. There you go. No, they didn't intercept. It did not intercept. So that's a little frustrating. So if you have anti-aircraft uh, weapons, you can press C and that will fire anti-aircraft missiles. That'll give you some form of protection or additional protection. That didn't work too well. We have some anti-aircraft ships on the ground. You can see how deadly uh, missiles are, especially when you're on the ground. <laughs> so they've taken us down to our bare bones, effectively. Right, what I'm going to do here... Uh, we're still refueling. We're just going to sit there and keep refueling. But the aircraft didn't protect us at all from those missiles, uh, you may have noticed. So I think that first strike group we've done and they've left. And we don't need to worry about them anymore. We now don't have any radar here, so the enemy may not keep coming this way. It's difficult to tell. Uh, they've wiped out all of our radar-capable um, ships, but uh, I suspect they're still going to be heading in the general direction. We still have an E-Lint, which is still going off at 240, telling me that there's something down here. Uh, whether or not I trust that E-Lint is uh, another 
thing altogether. I just need one more intel point. I can hit SG. So yes, there is still an SG down here, but it looks like they're trying to recover. Um, it's possible that they are moving slowly in this direction. But uh, sadly, we didn't pick up on the enemy that are up here, so... Keep our sonar pointing up. It seems like... I'd say... There we go. Right. I was about to say... What the E-Lint should do is it should pick up on two signals. So now at 330 degrees, which is approximately here... Right where that little message is... That's where Strike Group 2 should be, according to the E-Lint. 3.30, actually that's not quite right, let me, let me do that again. So North is there, and it's telling me they're just off North, so I'm going to say Strike Group 2 is round about there. Uh, and it's also telling me on the E-Lint that Strike Group, in fact, that seems a little too close. Um, now, what this can't do, the E-Lint system, is it is picking up on two sources. So, so there's a radar source up here, and there's a radar source down there, but it's only telling me that they're far away, which uh, kind of suggests that, that I've put that SG in the wrong place. I'd say the SG is probably about there. Thinking about it. So SG2 are, I'd say, ran about at Nimreth and also down here. Now, if they get really close and they stay there, I think that strike group is on the move. So let's say it's sort of ran about there or something. Um, if this one gets really close to us, the Elint alert distance uh, system will go mental. But it doesn't mean that they're both close, it just means that one or both of them are close. Now we have a jammer as well, um, and a jammer will jam their radar scanning capability, but we have no radar at all now, so they can't necessarily see us very well either. Um, so we're just going to let time tick over a little bit. And I'll fire a jammer out. So, you can see that the E-Lint for these guys has gone super close. Uh, the enemy are definitely moving in. For us, it's like immeasurably close. Now, the one that's down here is following this trajectory, so they're not going to be very close at all. So based on what we're seeing here, 330, which is just off north, I'm going to say that the strike group 2 is now round about there. That's where we believe them to be. So if I have a couple of ships, which I do, I'm going to put three with bombs, three with missiles, and I'm just going to send them out to that location there which is just in front of where I believe the Strike Group 2 to be. And we'll see how they fare. You can see they've picked up. They've gone to attack the enemy. And there is the Strike Group. This is what we've been looking for. Now they've got bombs, and they've got missiles, and they've got machine guns now. So let's just see. The bombs, super effective. And as somebody said in chat, and I 100% agree, um, there you go. Now they're using the missiles against the ships. Um, I 100% agree that bombs are super effective against big, heavily armoured, slow uh, machines like this. And they absolutely are, and you saw the evidence of it there. Now those aircraft are going to come back and uh, try and regroup with us. Now the enemy are probably thinking, where the bloody hell did they come from? <laughs> Which is good. We like that. Uh, we've still got I mean, these guys are doing absolutely nothing here, to be honest with you. So we're going to move them to here. They've got no radar, they've got no information other than uh, the E-Lint and the sonar. Let's just change the sonar to be slightly more northerly. Because as we come in close here, we're going to pick up on the enemy at some point. Uh, do I have zero missiles left? I have zero missiles left. That's a bit of a shame. 
Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the jammer. Now, effectively, the jammer is going to disrupt their uh, radar signals. But they're not actually picking up on any radar signals, so that's not going to help them so much. So what you could do with um, some of the little radar-capable ships that we, we've already lost is you could position them in, in certain areas and actively jam radar signals close to them. That would enable you to disrupt enemy targeting systems of you. So let's say, for example, you had a radar... Say, for example, you had a radar system. I think they've spotted us and they're trying to pick up on us here. Doubt whether the aircraft are going to be ready in time. We've got four left. It's probably going to result in a fight. Now, you see they're turning onto our team here. So they've got visual uh, reference of these guys. Even though the jammer is on, they're not using their radar now, they're using their eyeballs in order to identify where, they, where we are, where the enemy are, which is us. And probably the strike group that's down here is now heading north to come and meet and greet. So, we've now got loads of fuel, you'll see. Because the Skylark brought it over. So we're going to take off, right in amongst the enemy, and here we go. Now we've got a fight on our hands. We're going to go high explosive, high explosive, high explosive. We've got four ships which are not ready to take off, but they should be able to take off in a combat scenario. So we're not going to last very long with this longbow, that's absolutely fine. The four ships that we had on board have taken off. And they're off doing their thing. One's been taken down already. And we're going to do absolutely nothing against these ships. They are far too big. Far too well armoured. But you see, those missiles that you saw just then came from our ships. So I'm going to try and get to the retreat point by an ask against these ships. Okay. So this is our flagship, so we really can't have this one explode, but because I just threw this ship together, I haven't put any fire extinguishers on it. I haven't put any armor on it, I haven't done anything like that. Completely forgot, just got into battle like a madman, so we've just had our ship destroyed, which means that we've effectively, it's game over. But that's okay, because I think the primary point of this video has been achieved to show you how all the radar and the systems and everything work together. What I love about the enemy is they'll they'll train their guns on you, but they don't necessarily fire. And if they realize that they've missed you completely, they'll stop firing. All really good stuff. So you can see that this ship here has taken some damage down its right left-hand side, sorry. And there is a fuel tank there, so I'm just trying to get a little bit lucky. We have high explosive rounds. We don't, unfortunately, have any um, 
armor piercing rounds, that would definitely help us. Still confirmed. Wow, we actually took it out. So somehow we got a shot in there and killed it. But it, it's still game over because we lost our, our main ship, even though we won that fight. We won the fight, but we lost the war. Won the battle and lost the war. So, hopefully that has been a useful introduction to you for using missiles, aircraft, radar, sonar, e-lint, the whole package. Everything, I tried to include everything in there. I, I do wish that I had a few more missiles on me because there's a couple of things I still didn't get to show you in that. Um, some of the, uh, now I didn't use any um, uh, nuclear missiles at all because starting a nuclear war, uh, well... I don't particularly want to, but effectively the missiles are exactly the same. They just have uh, nuclear capabilities. And if you haven't seen that, go watch my starting a nuclear war video. You'll see just how destructive they are. 75,000 people dead in one city because of one nuclear missile. That kind of carnage is not really high up on my list of priorities, to be honest with you. But um, one thing I did want to show you was that these missiles are not in any way, even though they didn't attack our aircraft... They are not smart enough to distinguish between enemy ships and uh, your ships. Now, if you've got radar contact on an enemy and you fire at it that way, the chances of you hitting it are vastly increased because you've got a constant radar communication. So the missile will fly to that radar point and attack it rather than trying to find any radar point. Um, the... Uh, KH-15Ps have their own built-in radar system, so they will fly and pick up any um, issue at all. If, however, you but if you don't activate the radar before they've passed the enemy, they will continue going and they will hit the next available target. Now, that if that's you, they'll attack you. If that's an enemy fleet in a base, then that it will attack them. And that's basically it. Um, yeah. Let me know in the comments if you found that helpful. The game has actually crashed on me now. Um, it's a work in progress, this game. It's going to be a little bit unstable for a couple of weeks, I think. But yes, we've crashed, so I can't go back to the main menu. But that doesn't matter. The mission, I hope, has been achieved. That should give you a really solid understanding of how everything works together. And by putting it in practical terms and showing you from multiple different angles, hopefully... That's clarified everything for you. Let's hope. Until next time, take care. Goodbye for now.